Thinking about retiring and moving out of your home country? Moving abroad? Moving to your girlfriend's home country? Want to live as an expat? I'm going to give you one word. There's one key word that could potentially, possibly, and probably save your ass. Are you ready for it? You know what that word is? Rent. 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 Be a renter. Rent. I didn't say buy. I didn't say lease. The word of this topic, this conversation, is rent, motherfucker. Could potentially save your ass. So many people have made big mistakes and lost all their money and lost their ass on uh, various real estate deals, investments, transactions, scams, you name it. And... I've been living in Southeast Asia for over a decade. I've seen it so many times and every day there's a new fool coming over here. They name a country, but it's it's not just endemic to this region. It's foreigners leaving their home country. It's funny how you got to use the word foreigner. Anyhow, dudes leaving their home country, going to another country and buying something because a lot of times you can't own as a foreigner believe it or not but you don't do the research you have no fucking clue what you're doing and you end up losing your money there you go that's the intro to this video so welcome to today's talk this is a talking head show which means the scenery ain't gonna change i'm gonna have a discussion about an email sent from uh one of my friends here on the channel thank you very much I won't throw your name out there because I forgot to ask you, but uh, this gentleman sent an email, I guess about a year or two ago, about uh, a marriage falling apart, and it spurred a topic of a video which uh, got a lot of views, a lot of comments, uh, really hit home. Just basically telling case studies. You can sit here and give people advice all day long, and this is what I've learned. 99% of us males, we don't take anybody's advice. The smart 0.1% take the advice, and that's why they, they get ahead in life, right? Especially when we're young, we don't take advice. But then when you get to the point that you're going to retire and you've lived a life and you think you know everything, but when you move outside of your home country, you don't know shit. Let me rephrase that. You don't know jack shit, Jack. But you know everything. Because you're retired and you had 10 properties in America. How hard can it be? Well, we're going to do a case study. I'm going I'm to read this. It's basically a case study. If you've never watched Rafi Tulfo, here we go. Sound like a broken record throughout the years. If you've never watched the Rafi Tulfo show, uh, Senator Tulfo's show, he's now a senator in the Philippines, Runs this show. It's like a cross between uh, good old-fashioned Jerry Springer action versus legality, negotiation, advice. Uh, most of the shows are in Tagalog. You won't understand, but go in there and search the ones with the foreign guy. So the foreign guy, you know, loses a hundred thousand dollars because he builds a house in his wife's village. They break up. Now he wants his money back. The only recourse they have is go to Rafi Tulfo, right, and he'll profile him on the show try to work out some negotiation it's a wonderful show um, <clears throat> I'll try to put some links in the description so you can watch those case studies and here's the here's the kicker of it let's all agree that before I read this email there are real estate scams in any country in the world right there's real estate scams in America where people sell properties that don't belong to them uh, mortgage fraud there's all kind of pitfalls and scams and stuff that you can be taken with you know trying to do your own shit you're trying to be cheap so you don't want to go through a real estate agent uh, you're trying to you know do shit on your own but you're you don't know what you're doing you can get scammed in america so i'm not picking on southeast asia but the people who come over here and lose their ass are thinking with their heart their cock or something else they're blinded by beauty most of the time 
And that's how they lose their money. Where in America, they wouldn't lose their money. Anyhow, moving right along. Let's get into the email, right? Uh, again, the scenery is not going to change. I love this room here at the ranch because it is it is uh, the best audio out of any room I've ever broadcasted from. It's just perfect on the audio. There's no echo. Anyhow, so you're looking for beautiful girls to walk by in the background. It's not going to happen. Okay, so I get an email. This is a couple months ago. Uh, hey, I'm the guy who told you my story and you made the video and entitled 10 years married to a filipina ends in disaster so you know what i'll definitely put that link down in the description great video great talk uh spurred on by the same gentleman here man do i have a story for you a friend of mine just lost 86 grand trying to purchase a condo in cebu he got scammed i don't know the details but the lesson is clear do not fuck with buying real estate in the Philippines. Now, I'll talk about buying because as a foreigner, you technically cannot buy. Well, you can't buy property. Yes, you can buy a condo. I'll clear that up in a minute. I can tell you all, I can tell you all that, that I know if you want to make a video out of it and maybe help the next guy with pipe dreams save a ton of money. <laughs> So he's trying to help he's trying to help out his fellow man just like I'm doing. It's the purpose of this video is to help out my fellow man to uh, to just invoke thought. I'm not telling you what to do. And uh, and the worst thing you can do to another man is tell him how to spend his money. So the purpose of this video is merely to invoke thought you, the person potentially doing research for your retirement or you've already retired and you're thinking about uh, doing some type of real estate transaction. My purpose is to invoke thought. You can take it or leave it. Moving right along. Um, my friend is now in the hospital here in America because he's had a serious mental breakdown. Uh, the whole story is tragic and my heart breaks for this poor guy. That is a shit ton of money to lose and he can't process it. There's other reasons he's mentally screwed up right now. That I can tell you too, it's all Philippines related. Now look, we're not blaming the Philippines, or we're not directly blaming Filipinas, but the point is the guy went to the Philippines, that's where his trouble started. And I will just make the admission or the argument right now. I'll make the argument right now, it's all self inflicted. Okay? He did it to himself. He he set himself up. He walked into the trap himself. Nobody put a gun to his head and said, give me 86 grand. Therefore, it's self-inflicted. All right. So, uh, hoping you can make a video and warn all these hard-headed dudes who just won't listen. They always think, well, that shit happens to all the other dudes, but I have this figured out. Yeah. No, you don't. Hope you're doing well. So, uh, that was the original email. And I told him, I said, hey, man, sorry to hear about your friend. Yeah, I'll do a fresh video on the topic because I've done probably dozens uh, over, the, over the past decade. I can't even re remember them all. Folks, there's like 1,600 videos I've posted on this platform. I can't remember. If you said name, name 15 videos that you've done in the titles, I, I'd be, I could probably do it, but don't ask me to do 25. I drink a lot of beer. So, uh, dudes just can't seem to appreciate the concept of renting. Hope you're doing well. That was my reply. And then uh, a day or so later, he responds. He says, hey, man. Well, it turns out he actually wasn't ripped off. Even he's not sure exactly what happened, but it was damn close. And the banker, an American bank in California told him he was incredibly lucky however it went down so it seems like he's trying to purchase a condo and folks we're getting this 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 for me it's what third hand uh my buddy here is getting it from his buddy so it's a, a game of telephone tag right so by the time he gets to me he gets to you the facts may be a little bit skewed but it doesn't matter uh because these stories happen every day so it sounds like he was trying to buy a condo, but somehow or another they were stepping in trying to scam the bank transfer or trying to scam 
Well, yeah, that's what it sounds like. He doesn't know if the condo people were in on it or what, but at any rate, he wired it again, and apparently it got there okay. Uh, okay, but he's completely freaked out and is having panic attack after panic attack, and his Philippines dream is now on hold. He's eyeballs deep into the condo, but now he considers Cebu a shithole. Traffic, trash, noise, endless honking, exhaust fumes. Okay. Now this is in my notes, but I'll just make a quick uh, observation. So it sounds like something was shady in the initial transfer. They were trying to scam him, but maybe the U.S. bank uh, had his back on it. But he goes back in, fires for effect, and actually buys the condo. And it actually went through. So a scare on the scam... Now he's locked into the condo, but things aren't going hunky-dory in his world. His girlfriend is young and beautiful, of course, right? But her family annoys him and never talks to him, never says thank you. And they're always wanting and needing of everything under the sun. No surprise there. Okay, his 83-year-old mother in, in the U.S., now he's 61, so our, our gentleman is 61, Insisted he go to the emergency room because he was just a mess and couldn't sleep for days. He's out now, but he's so doubtful about his once uh, beautiful dream. Just a year ago, he was convinced he found the greatest place on earth, but all the typical Philippines bullshit ca caught up to him, and now he feels different and is very depressed and worrisome over it all. Okay. Now, folks, listen. I'm not casting stones at the Philippines. It just happens to be... Uh, where this story takes place. The story could easily be morphed to where folks from the Philippines move to New Jersey and, uh, you know, have bad luck on a real estate deal, and now all of a sudden their dreams are shattered. So don't think we're picking on any particular country, all right? You can, you can change this around. This is everyday life, okay? So let's just get that out of the way. I'm sure I'm going to get a comment. If you don't like the Philippines, go home to your home country, you son of a bitch. You're giving us expats a bad name. And I'm going to have some Filipino OFWs. Just go home to your home country. Moving right along. Uh, I told him his first mistake was thinking he had his life and future all figured out and in the bag. Uh, yeah, sorry. No, because none of us do. I also told him he'd better learn to roll with shit, both big and small, or he won't make it. Yeah, you're not in Kansas anymore. You move out of your home country, move to a totally different culture, and things don't work the same. Okay, that applies anywhere. Alright, anyway, anyway, he at least knows that when the luckiest day of his life was, and it was the day that the bank called him and told him they had $86,000 of his money. Where does he want it? He was shocked. He thought the money was 100% gone. Then they explained how the money never actually made it to the scammer. Etc. Etc. Again, he doesn't fully understand it himself. What an emotional roller coaster ride he's been on the last, uh, I don't know, 10 days or so. Whatever it is. My printer's out of ink. I keep procrastinating about get, getting a new printer cartridge. My gosh. Sorry to not have a great story. To, oh, sorry to not have a great story to tell you. Although a very depressing one. Uh, hey, maybe what I've told you so far will still make a decent video. We'll be sure to let you know if there's any news out there you might be interested in. Alright, so thank you very much. Thank you very much for sending the email, my friend. And so I wanted to read the email up front. Then we go back and dissect it. There's so many learning points in here. Um, and it's sort of basically two things. A, he almost got scammed. Luckily, he didn't. But then B, his dream location is not working out for him. And he's not happy. But now he's 86 grand into a condo that uh, he ain't going to be able to sell. Or if he does, it ain't going to be anytime soon. Okay, so let me go to my notes. Folks, nothing is scripted here. I've never written a script. I don't know how to write a script. I, I've taken some notes. 
they're all over the place, like totally different directions. You have to bear with me when I do these these talks. Oh shit. I'm almost leaving out I'm depriving myself of the most important thing of this video. It's a, a piece of equipment that helps me make these videos and bring good quality learning content to the masses out there. Piece of equipment number one. Red fake Dixie cup. Durable red and white in color. Imported from America. Piece of equipment number two. Big beer scene. And then number three. Bottle opener. Small magnet, one each. My gosh, how can I sit here and do a talking head video without a good brewski? Let me, let me uh, get down to business here. Let's get down to business. Folks, I did that video. Let me take a break for a second. I did that video, uh, what, yesterday, day before, where I was telling the story about El Gato Flaco. And I went back and I looked at it, and and that was like, I, I was like stuttering. I couldn't think. I put, couldn't put my thoughts together. I wasn't talking uh, normal. I think it's because I was too sober. When I have a few beers, my talks just flow so much easier. Okay, so let me go to my notes. I read you the email. Retiree's most important word to learn. To embrace I don't know what the title of the video is gonna be haven't figured it out but rent 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 you rent you fucking rent at least I would say for the first year that you live in any new location outside of your home country for that first motherfucking year don't sign a lease don't think, think you're even thinking about buying something. No, absolutely not. Don't transfer a huge amount of money to the country that you just moved to. You move to that country with two suitcases maximum. You keep your money in your home country's bank. Let's just use America. I'm from America originally. You keep your, your fucking money and in a U.S. bank account, you don't need a fucking bank account if you just move to a new country. Keep your money in the U.S. bank. How do you get it out? Go to the fucking ATM machine. Okay? Keep your money in your home country's bank. Rent you a fucking place for at least one year before you start putting down anchors and roots. Okay? I'm going to try to stay on the flow here. But why? Okay? Why? Well, let's talk about the problems. Let's talk about the problems when you move somewhere new. Again, I'm a broken record. I've said this so many times. If you've traveled to the Philippines and you spent two weeks there, you know, every year for a few years, and you think you know the Philippines and you're in love with it and you want to move there, uh, okay, that's wonderful. But there is a total difference in taking a two week vacation. Why? Because you're on vacation. A one week, a two week, a three week vacation is totally different than living everyday life long term anywhere on the globe. Let's all agree with that. Okay, it's like going on a, a four day cruise on a cruise ship. You have this perspective. Now it's a little different, but, but say you worked on the damn cruise ship, right? Totally different perspective. So, going on a vacation where you have no care in the world and a pocket full of money and a little bit of time, where you have more money than time, you're going to have a certain experience. You know, you're at the club every night. You're eating shrimp and lobster, right? Because you got, you got five days and you got a pocket full of money. You're not going to have another vacation for six months or a year, so you're there to blow it out. When you move to that same place whether it's the Philippines or the Bahamas, now you're budgeting everyday life, and most of us ain't rich. So instead of eating shrimp and lobster every day, you know, going to bar fine and two or three chicks a night, all of a sudden, holy shit, you, you, gotta, you gotta live month to month based on your budget and your monthly income. 
for most of us, right? If you're a millionaire and up, it, maybe this shit don't apply to you. Tell that long story to say, when you move to that country, you might find out that everyday life is not for you. And a lot of people do this. They'll go to Guatemala. They'll move to Thailand. They'll come to, well, they'll come to Thailand. They'll go to the Philippines. They'll go to Vietnam. And after three months, they're burnt out and they don't want to play anymore. And all of a sudden, they want to go home. There's a big percentage of people that that happens to. Whether it's they just don't feel comfortable, not, you know, the language barrier, or uh, they develop a health problem, or they're worried about a health problem, they want to go back to U.S. healthcare For whatever reason, it's not that you're a failure, or it's good, or it's bad, it's just a fact of life. If you move somewhere in three or four months, you may not like it and you want to move. Okay, so let's use the Philippines for example. Your dream is to live in Cebu. You move to Cebu, and two or three months later, you decide you don't like it. I'm going to move to Angeles City. Well, if you're just renting a place, what do you do? You pick up them two suitcases, you get on a $50 flight to Angeles City, and rent a place. Now you live in Angeles City. You live there for two, three, four, five months, six months. You're like, damn, I like it here. You know, this is working out perfect. I'm living the fucking dream. Let me start looking around at condos or something, you know, maybe I, I want to purchase. Okay, that would be the appropriate route to go. But I would say give it a year in Angeles City before you make you pull that trigger. Because why? You might spend three months in Angeles and be like, man, this place sucks. I'm moving to Baguio. It's too hot down here. Let me move to the mountains where it's cool. As long as your ass is renting month to month with no lease, you can do that. And over here, there's so many places that will rent you month to month, whether it's a hotel, an apartment, a condo, whatever, Airbnb. Why lock yourself into a fucking lease? Okay? It's an anchor. And I don't even want to talk about the word buy right now. We're still talking about you don't even sign a fucking six-month lease. Because now... If you don't like your neighbors or you don't like the location, you're stuck for six months. you got to pay some money. Rent. 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 Is the novice retiree's favorite word that a lot of y'all, uh, well, some of y'all won't listen to. You just won't fucking listen. Let me get back on my notes. Well, let me take a drink of this beer first. My gosh, I'm letting it get warm. Uh, okay, so let's go down the notes. Um, condos versus um, buying a house or land. I'm not going to get too far into the legality, but many countries, foreigners cannot own land, which means you can't buy a house because you can't own the land that it sits on. However, a lot of condo buildings allow 49% of ownership, it varies from country to country where a foreigner can actually own the condo. So let's talk about buying a condo and the problems that I see and I have seen over a decade of living over here looking at condos. And it applies, the problems with condos apply anywhere really, right? Okay. If you buy a condo... Um, you own it. That's the positive of it, right? You own it. You can you you can buy it, put it in your name. You can sell it. You're not dependent upon uh, any local to have a, some type of controlling interest in that condo, right? So you own it. That's yours. So off plan. A lot of people try to get a deal when they buy a condo off plan. In other words, before the building is built and you can move in. All right. What's the problem with buying off plan? There's a certain percentage of buildings and projects that go south and they never get finished. Okay? Within two kilometers of where I'm sitting, I could take you to three projects right now that I drive by frequently that uh, a bunch of people purchased units off plan 
and now they're they never got finished it they're they're you know various stages some of them are 30 percent completed they're just concrete structures sitting over there they're just abandoned buildings and what happened to all the people who bought off plan and invested into that they just lost their money not getting your money back jack all right your condo is over there you can go look at it but it ain't gonna be finished and now it's the land is tied up because they defaulted on the loan you're, you're done so uh anywhere purchasing a condo off plan is risky but if it works out you save a ton of money move right along okay you buy the condo there are maintenance fees which usually over here they're, they're pennies on the dollar right for maintenance fees right maintenance is nothing like the cost in america right but what happens say in five years um there's something seriously you know a serious maintenance issue where the association doesn't have enough money or what have you to cover that maintenance issue it happens in america all the time right these old old condo buildings down in miami they will just come out and say a special assessment or whatever each tenant's got to pay 1500 bucks just out of the blue because somebody's got to pay for it to fix the elevator or whatever is broken well, Americans, even though they're strapped, if they are forced and backed into it, hell, somebody can find a credit card somewhere, swipe it, and pay the, the special assessment fee. And when I say 1500 that's a joke. My buddy said his dad and them got hit with something like 15000 or 20000 a tenant to fi fix something major with the building. Okay, in the West, people can stomach that. They can, not that they want to, but some way or another, they, they'll pay the money, right, for the most part. What about in places like this, where people in that condo building are living paycheck to paycheck, they scraped up everything they could to buy that unit. What happens in 5 or 10 years if there's a major maintenance issue? You can't get blood from a turnip. The locals don't have credit. They can't go get a loan. They don't have that extra cash laying around to pay any type of fee. So how is the fucking building going to get fixed? I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to just listen to what I'm saying and, and, and hopefully that it invokes thought. So if you walk into, say, an older building that needs some fixing up, where is that money coming from? Are you just going to let the, the siding start falling off or the, you know, the balconies rust out? Who's going to pay for that? And then you look at, okay, if... Well, Again, I can take you to some condos right now. I saw when they were built brand new, beautiful buildings, but they didn't they're mostly vacant for whatever reason. They ha they haven't been selling, they didn't sell. And the buildings are in a in a state of disrepair. They're probably only 15% occupied. You know, the fucking pigeons, the birds are taking over. There's a lot of maintenance because of the birds fucking up things that if they ever do fill those condos up, uh they're going to have to come up with that money somewhere to fix the place. The fucking shit blowing off the roof. So the people who bought those units, you know, they, they didn't envision the building getting slowly uh, turning into a state of disarray. But that's what happened. Philippines. What unique problems does the Philippines geographically have that certain other places don't number one typhoons typhoons come through that place every year and wreck havoc okay like real havoc number two what else do you have volcanoes number three what's associated with volcanoes earthquakes so i'm going to tell the story and and you know, if you're out there trying to make a living selling condos and shit, I'm not impacting your business. Why? Because people don't listen to advice. Grown men, they don't listen to advice. They're going to do what the hell they're going to do. If I say one dude, that's not impacting your business. I, I'd be, I, I, I say I'm lucky if I save one dude from uh, losing his ass on something. So don't, don't worry. I'm not impacting your business. There's still plenty of fools coming trying to give you their money. 
all right, I had, a, I had a girlfriend that worked in a condo building and had a girlfriend that worked at a hotel. Totally unrelated, years apart. And there was an earthquake. I'm not saying the location. I'm not telling you the fucking names. It's all, just listen to the story. The first girlfriend worked at a hotel, and I'll say it's it's like not a high rise. It's probably like, I don't know, 12, 14, 15 floors, right? There was an earthquake, and I'm talking to her, and she said, yeah, it cracked the hell out of the elevator shaft. And I'm like, it did, because I went there, and I didn't notice anything on the outside structure, you know, after this big-ass earthquake. And she said, yeah, if you look in the inside of the elevator shaft, that shit's cracked. It's, you know, like, like looks like it's fucked up, right? And I said, well, damn, how are they going to fix it? That don't, that don't sound good. The damn elevator shaft is cracked. The elevator's still running, right? <laughs> and after that, I didn't get in that fucking elevator. But now she's just a worker bee. But I kept, you know, I asked her a couple times, hey, they're going to fix that? How are they going to fix it? I don't know how you fix a cracked elevator shaft after an earthquake. Is it safe? Is it safe to fix? I don't know. All I know is it never got fixed. There was never anything done. The fucking elevator's still operating. As far as I know. Well, I can't say that. I ain't talked to the chick in years. Maybe at some point they they brought some engineers in and fixed it and shored it up. I'm sure that's what happened. I ain't talked to her in years, so I don't know. But then probably two years apart from that incident, coincidence, you know, just a coincidence, I uh, had a chick working at a, a, a condo, about the same size building, had an earthquake, and it just came up in conversation. I'm like, you know, she... So like, yeah, you know, the building was shaking, whatever. I'm like, was there any damage? She said, just the elevator shaft got cracked. <laughs> and I'm like, where have I ever heard this story before? I'm like, well, what are, what are they going to do? How are they going to fix it? Now, I ain't talked to her in years either. So maybe I'm, I'm certain. I'm certain they brought in some engineers and fixed the fucking elevator shaft. But you can't make this shit up. And it was two different chicks, two different geographical locations in the Philippines, far apart. And that was the stories I was told. So I'm sitting there thinking, God damn, I'm glad I don't own a fucking condo in this building. You know what the fucking elevator falls in or something. What? I don't know. It just, note to self. Don't buy a condo. It's, it's prone to earthquakes. <laughs> You know, you see them videos in Manila, them high-rises going like that, and the swimming pool water coming over onto the ground? I'm not into buying a condo in the Philippines, I'm going to tell you right now. Just not for me. Thailand, you don't have the problem with uh, earthquakes. A little bit safer to, to buy a condo. Uh, in the PI, I would only buy, and we'll talk about the word buy, I would only buy a uh, property, a house. You know, two-story house maximum. Uh, just because of that, there's an earthquake threat. That is a fucking fact. There's a volcano threat. Okay, people, everybody living in Angeles City, it's like Mount Vesuvius in Naples. Okay, so what, 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius erupts, wipes out Naples, wipes out Pompeii. All right, we're still digging up Pompeii in those areas today, learning exactly how they live because a volcano buried them. And what happened? Well, people still live around there. They built back. It's the same shit happened in Angeles City. What was it, 1991? Mount Pinatubo wipes out that whole area. What do people do? They still live there. Well, guess what? The volcano is still over there. Mount Vesuvius over here. Mount Pinatubo over here. Angeles City sort of in the middle Angeles City is like the meat on a volcano sandwich. Think about that. And we still live up there. Every day I question myself. I'm like, why the fuck am I living between two volcanoes? One, which the eruption in 1991 was so powerful, it lowered the global temperature by one degree for ten years. And people just dig up out of the ash and rebuild and continue to live there like the people in Naples. Like it's never going to happen again. Uh, it's funny we talk about cracks because like if you look at uh, stories in Pompeii, 
they knew they know for a fact that there was geogra uh, there was a you know earthquake volcanic activity before that huge eruption because there was dudes actually in the process of fixing cracks in the wall of a place when Mount Vesuvius blew and covered them and they you know and they excavate the stuff and they, they still got the paint they were like fixing the wall from previous cracks when that thing went off anyhow long story short to say I'm not buying a condo in the PI it have to be land uh, you know uh, land in a house now buying land in many countries as a foreigner you can't own the land what you have to do now I'm not a lawyer Let's let's start. I'm not I'm not I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving legal advice. Somebody's gonna fucking complain. Say you told me this. Go consult your lawyer. But you can't own the land. So what what happens is typically in these situations there's a there's a company. You form a company or a company is formed, and you the foreign guy own 49 percent of that company, and then there's 51 percent at least of local stakeholders, local. Uh, owners of that country or of that company now i'm not a wall street guy but think about it and i've never heard of this happening but technically if all those other people that are in that country band together they can do a hostile takeover because they own 51 percent of it and do whatever the hell they're going to do with you they could put you out of your own place they could take over the business then they could put you out of your own house technically Never heard of that being done, but understand that you think you own that land, but you really don't. You're 49% interest in that company. The company, you own the company, or you own 49% of the company, and the house is an asset of the company. But if all those locals band together, they got 51%. That's a controlling interest, right? I'm not a Wall Street guy. I'm just telling you. There's risk involved with that. So, I've kind of covered the risk of buying a condo. Um, I think long-term maintenance issues, unless that building is full of foreigners or, uh, you know, uh, upper middle class or, or above locals that can stomach a major maintenance issue. If you're in a cheap condo, at some point, maintenance is going to be a problem. Because if there's anything big, who's going to fork out the money? You, the foreign guy living on $1,000 a month, Social Security, or the locals, you know, you know, him and his wife working, making 1000 bucks a month, and now all of a sudden the elevator goes out, who's going to fix it? It's a concern, long-term maintenance. I never thought about that before until I sat here. I've been here a long time and look at these places and just continue to get run down and run down and run down i'm like why don't they paint that why don't they fix that I'm like fool nobody's got no money everybody living in that condo is broke can't get blood from a turnip mother all right get back to my notes here okay so talked about uh let's see buying off plan okay rent i'm gonna tell you another reason why rent is your 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 buddy the word rent is your buddy your friend if you are a foreigner living in somebody else's country what if you have a disagreement with your neighbor and I'm not talking about another foreigner who gives a shit in these countries like this the locals don't give a shit if foreigners are fighting foreigners or having a dispute with foreigners they don't give a shit you get in a fist fight with another foreigner just go fight in the street get, you know, hit, get, they don't give a shit it's totally different when you have a disagreement with the local. Now it makes national news. So, for example, you buy a condo, your neighbor is a local, they consistently play loud music or smoking their cigarettes on their balcony, it's filtering into your condo, and now you got a, a dispute with a neighbor who's a local. Sucks to be you, because 99.9% .9 of the time, you are not going to win any dispute against a local. Uh, that's the way it is, because locals don't go against locals. Especially if you're perceived to be, you know, the rich foreign guy over there being an asshole, trying to tell everybody to cut their music down, or turn their vidjoki down. 
uh, you're going to lose. Especially in the Philippines. It's a loud country and people love vidjoki. So at 2 in the morning, if your neighbors are blasting some vidjoki and you can't stand it, what can you do? Well, guess what you can do if you rent, motherfucker? You can pick up them two suitcases and you can fucking move. You can move to another floor in the building after that month's rent's up. You just tell the, hey, you know, my neighbors are too loud. You got a, a room on a higher floor, a lower floor. You can move in the building. You can move to another building. You can move to another city. Pick up your two suitcases. Total landlord, you're leaving. Get your deposit back. Maybe. Probably not. But, and move. That is your best recourse if you have a dispute with a local okay we stayed in a place where uh the neighbors i'll just i'll make a long story short we stayed in the place where the neighbors were cooking with wood which fatty miles family still cooks with wood you've seen the videos a lot of locals cook with wood why they can't afford gas and they, they can't afford the electric bill they're cooking with wood. The problem was their little kitchen was right next to our window, which we kept open for ventilation at night. And all of a sudden at 4 in the morning, when Grandma's over there trying to, you know, cook some eggs or make some hot coffee, I wake up and I'm basically in a gas chamber of smoke. Like, fuck, this is a problem. What can I do? Okay, so we close the window. Now we're sweating balls. But the, the smoke is still coming in through the cracks, through the doors, what have you. It just wafted into our room. We're about to die. What, what, do, you think, what, what, what do you think my options were? To go over there and tell these poor people who've lived there for decades they can't cook with wood no more because they're smoking up my room? That's not an option. I mean, maybe I could have went over there and bought them a stove and then bought them gas. Uh and kept them supplied with gas or bought them an electric burner and offered to pay their electric bill. Other than that, you're not going to prevent locals from cooking with wood when that's how they all survive. All I knew was, hey, we're about to fucking die up in here because of the smoke. What do we do? Pick up them two suitcases. Tell the landlord this is our last month because we got no lease. We move. We're out of there. Let a local move in and locals deal with locals. They'll work something out. They'll figure the shit out. But it's not going to end well for me if I go over there and start trying to dictate how they cook their breakfast. Rent. Rent, mother... Any type of dispute. You, you, you just move. Pretty simple. Two suitcases. Man, talk so much. Mess, mess around, let my beer get warm. I'm gonna start drinking. Okay. Um, okay, what else? Um, what if it's too hot where you live? Now, it's, it's hot most places over here, right? But there are regions that are higher elevation. So, taking the Philippines, for example, most of the Philippines is hot as balls. That's what I told, told Fatima this morning. I said, look, it's just, you know, I'm thinking about moving to the mountains next year. Let's go to Baguio. Baguio is up in the mountains. It's up in elevation. There's pine trees. It's cool. Um, totally different than living down at the beach. You, you move to Baguio, you can walk around in a suit and not sweat your ass off. You need a jacket at night. Where we live right now, you're basically walking around in a, in a pair of shorts all day. And you're still sweating. It's hot. So you move to the PI, living your dream, and you decide, man, it is too hot. It is hot. You can easily move up to Baguio, get a cooler environment. How do you do that? Well, if you rent, here we go. The joy of renting. It's too hot. Get my two suitcases and I move to Baguio. Now it's cool. Now I'm living, living life to its fullest. Just another fucking example where is if you buy a house or you buy a condo, 
like this gentleman here in the case study, that Joker is stuck in Cebu City. His 86 grand is stuck in that anchor in Cebu City. What are his options? A, put it up for sale. That motherfucker ain't going to sell for years. That's the odds. B, he can put it up for, uh, for rent and take his rent money, hopefully get it rented out, and he can move up to Angeles City and rent a place. But now he's, now he's a property manager. Now he's got to deal with this headache of being a landlord. When you retire and you come over on a small budget, you don't want to end up fucking around being a landlord. You want to just sit back and enjoy your life. And if you're a renter and you rent and you pay rent, there's no worries. You don't worry about maintenance. You call the landlord. So our guy in the study is stuck in Cebu City. What's his options? You know, he says the city's dirty, what have you. Well, welcome to the P.I., but maybe he would be more happy in Angeles City. But now he's got an $86,000 condo in Cebu. What's he going to do with it? Can he get enough rent out of that place to pay his rent up in AC? I'm sure he can. But what if it sits vacant for two or three months before he gets a renter? It's just eating away at his pension or his small Social Security check. I say small. His Social Security check. Where if you rent, you don't have that problem. Okay, let's move right along. Um, okay. All right, let's talk, talk about two things. This is where I will trump each and every one of anybody's argument about renting versus buying outside of your home country. This is what people don't think about. They think they have rights. You know, when you don't. And what I'm talking about is you are living in another country as a privilege to you. It's a privilege, not a right. And trust me, anywhere here in Southeast Asia, you are staying in these countries as a privilege. It's not your right to live in Thailand, the Philippines, uh, Lao, Vietnam, Cambo. At any moment, any moment, any moment, if you find yourself not in the good graces of the local government, the locals, um, anybody over there that has enough weight or if it gets enough publicity, one stamp in your passport, boom, the sound of a stamp, a sound of ink a rubber with ink on it hitting paper, which takes about a split second, but bam, cha-ching. Your visa can be canceled, and you got 48 hours or however long they, they give you to leave the country and never come back in some, cir some circumstances. Now imagine, not that it happens very often, but it can, and it just happened here in Thailand, you're, you buy a house, or you buy a condo, you're loving life, and then all of a sudden there's an incident, and your visa is canceled. Think about the risk in that. Now, they're not telling you you got to go home. Uh, the case I'm going to talk about, I think this dude's Swiss, right, Switzerland. You don't got to go home, but you got to get the hell up out of here. That means you can't go home to your condo or your house that you sunk your entire nest egg in, you got 48 hours to pack up your shit and leave. Just happened here. Make a long story short, I think he was Swiss. Uh, they're living right on the beach, what have you. A couple of locals sit down on some steps just to take a break. The steps were actually erected on uh, public land, public property from what I understand. And this jackass, I think they call him the beach bully. Anyhow, he went down there and kicked one of them in the back for sitting on his steps. Turns out she's a local doctor. You know, it's not some some uh, drunk tourist or, uh, you know, dude working in the kitchen that he kicked. Turns out it's a female doctor. 
and I just loosely know what's going on, but followed it. But basically, it caused sort of a nationwide nationwide outrage, and rightfully so. To the point they had locals going down there, like taking trophy pics on this guy's steps, you know, to, to prove a point. Hey, man, you're a foreigner, and, and that's not appropriate. And we're not going to deal with that. Well, guess what happened to this dude? What I've heard, his his visa is canceled. I don't know if he, him and his wife bought that house or if they're renting that house. It doesn't matter. One incident, one bad, horribly terrible, horrible lapse in his judgment. Now, maybe he's an asshole all the time. I don't know. Or maybe he just was drinking and got triggered that night and made a bad decision. It doesn't matter. When he kicked that female doctor in the back, that's it. You're out of this country, motherfucker. You're gone. No, he, I think he appealed it, and they said, hell no. You're out of here. You're out of here. Get the fuck out. Now, if he owns that place, imagine that. Transferred all his money. He's been living over here for however many years. That's his house. Got all his shit hanging on the wall. You know, got his I love me wall. You know, living. Who? And then one night, who the hell's that out on our steps? I'll, get, I'll deal with them. Boom. Changed his whole life. I don't know if he's getting prosecuted or not. I don't know. I didn't follow it close enough. The point is, you live outside of your home country. It's a privilege, not a fucking right. And that privilege can be revoked in one second, less than one second, with a piece of rubber called a stamp with some ink on there canceling your visa, which is your privilege to live in that country and they give you X amount of time to get the hell out. You will leave your own house. So maybe I'll put a link to that incident down in the description so you can see. But it, the, the whole nation, I think they nicknamed him the Beach Bully. <laughs> Anyhow, I've personally witnessed it, it happened to a Russian girl that was getting mouthy with the female immigration officer. The whole place, you know, she's getting loud. She fuck you, blah blah blah, running her mouth. The, other, the girl's just sitting there being patient until a male supervisor came over, grabbed the passport, put a stamp in it, and said, "Now you leave. You have 48 hours to leave. It's over. You got to go. That's it. It's done. It's just like that." So imagine you got 86 grand. Something happens. God forbid. Most of the time it don't. I'm just saying. That's the biggest risk is that you don't have the right to live at your own house if you buy something outside of your home country. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Money. When you transfer money... Uh, no, it's different from every country where it's coming from, where it's going. I'm just going to bring this up to invoke thought. Okay. If you transfer money into a place like Thailand, right? It's not a big deal to transfer money in. So say you transfer uh, 200000 in. You can transfer it in. No problem. You're sitting in America, transfer the money. Okay, no problem. What happens when you go to transfer that money back? Say say you transfer the money in, a couple months later you decide, hey, I'm not buying a fucking condo, what have you, or I'm just going to rent, and then you want to transfer 50 grand back to the U.S. It's not going to the bank and transferring that shit back. There, It's not that easy. And I'm not going to sit here and, and talk about all the details and the rules or what have you. But some of these countries, it's very easy to transfer it in and damn near impossible to transfer it back. You need to do your own research. No matter where, what home country you're sitting in now and what country you're going to, only thing you're researching, most of you, is how do I transfer this money into the Philippines? That's all you're researching. When you need to be following up with that and researching, what if I have a stroke after a week of getting there and I need to get back to my home country and I need that money how do I transfer that money back 
but nobody researches it. Nobody goes that far. They don't think that far ahead because it's like getting married. When you get married to a chick, uh, 99% of males, you're not thinking about the divorce. Now, me and my crew, okay, we, <laughs> we think like that. Hell, because we've been married, I don't know, four or five times. I can't remember if I'm still married to that uh, hooker in Vegas or not. Don't know, but we think like that. The average guy doesn't. You're in love, let's get married. You're not thinking so far down the line about the divorce. It's the perfect analogy to say you're going to transfer a ton of money into the Philippines, buy a condo, that's as far as you're researching. When you should, that should be like 50% of it. The other 50% should be, how do I sell this fucking place? What's the odds of selling this fucking place or renting this place out? And if I do, by the grace of, of God, sell the place if I need to, can I transfer that money back to my home country? And what am I going to need to show that bank to get it done? And how long is it going to take? And can it be done? Nobody thinks like that because you don't, you don't plan for the fucking divorce. So you're retiring, and you're not going to take my advice about renting. You better research what happens when I divorce my Philippine wife, and I want to move back to America, and I sell my condo. How do I get that fucking money back in my bank? Because I'll tell you a story. Okay, good buddy of mine, he had a Philippine, uh, he got a Philippine retirement visa, right? There in Angeles City from the retirement office. He said, wonderful folks. I've, I've been in there and talked to them myself. Friendly folks. He said they took them around, did everything they needed to do. He said it was absolutely painless. He said the only problem that he had that he could complain about during the whole process was opening the bank account. He said, man, opening the bank account was, was stressful as hell. They wanted this. They wanted that. He said that was the only stressful part about getting his visa. No, he's got the SRRV where you put like 1400 bucks in the bank, what have you. Well, he decided he's not living in the Philippines anymore. So he's, he went there. He said, hey, I'm going to cancel my visa where I can get that 1400 back. I'm retiring somewhere else. Uh, it wasn't like, hey, okay, fill this out and we'll send you to 1400 It was something like, okay, give us your passport for a month. And then you, and then we'll process it, and then this and this. It was like a three-month, four-month process to get this fourteen hundred dollars refunded. I don't know if he ever got the fucking money back. I told him, I said, man, don't waste your time. God, it's going about your life. Uh, anyhow, I have to call him and ask him about it. Things people just don't think about until it happens to them, then they complain. They go to Rafi Tufo, cry on his shoulder. Um. Let's see. What about this pending war with China? I don't, oh shit, I won't go there. Well, maybe I will. I will go there. Okay, there's, a, there's an upcoming war with China in the South China Sea. What's going to happen in the PI? The PI is the front lines. Oh my gosh, oh that won't happen, blah blah blah. How many motherfuckers were running YouTube channels out of Kiev? I refuse to say Kiev. In Kiev, Ukraine, right up until the bombs started falling. They were talking about condo prices and buying condos and this and that, uh, just like anywhere else. Until the bombs started falling, and guess what? Everybody got the fuck out, right? Well, there's already shots being fired, so to speak, with water cannons and lasers in the South China Sea. So if that shit kicks off and all of a sudden you got to get off the X, something major, you sit there and you tell yourself it can't happen. That's what the fuckers in, living in the Ukraine, loving life, were telling themselves right up until a couple years ago. So, if you rent, if you were in, in Kiev, in the Ukraine, renting, you pack your two suitcases, get on the next flight out before the bombs start falling. What if you bought something? Holy shit. I don't, I don't even want to think about how many people lost everything they fucking had. Because they didn't take my advice and, and rent something. Okay. Money goes into a hole. Has to be play money. 
whatever you transfer, and again, we're using the Philippines as an example. Whatever you transfer into the Philippines, or you're going to buy a condo, or buy some land, or build a house, you have to assume that that money is never going back to your U.S. bank account. Never. Never to return. Born to be why. It ain't coming back. It's play money. It's gambling money. It's you set a budget at the casino. I'm taking 500. I know I'm going to lose it. I don't care. I'm going to be entertained. If you got 500 grand in the bank, okay, I'll take 100K to the Philippines. And if shit don't work out or if there's a war with China and I got to leave, I still have 400 grand in my U.S. bank. Whatever money you transfer in, it ain't coming back. You ain't getting it back. Just if you assume that, then you're okay. All right, easy to buy, very difficult to, to sell above. Uh, all right. It's easy for you to buy, obviously, right? Say you buy something or build something out in your wife's province, and now you want to sell it because you got a heart problem. You're going to move back, what have you. There's no pool of buyers in the province, folks. You'll probably go out there and build the nicest fucking house within a 30-mile radius. Why? Because nobody else has any money to build a house like you. So unless you find a Filipina around there that marries a foreign guy or marries a rich local guy, there's no pool of buyers to consider your property. I just saw a, a thumbnail said something about you know uh, I think American guy built like a four million dollar house on the beach or whatever. How many potential buyers do you think that there are for that property? Not many. Not not many. Um, be, because there, it's just outside the, the price range of the masses. Folks, people can't sell shit in Angeles City where it's chock full of foreigners. There's been houses for sale for years and years and years. Nothing wrong with the house. It's just nobody's got the money to buy it. So if it's difficult to sell a house in Angeles City, how do you think you're going to sell a house out in the province? You can't. You're stuck with it. It's an anchor. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Locals can't afford it. Now, so we've been talking mostly real estate, but let's talk about, uh, let me also touch on, you know, you're breaking up with your Filipina. So you build a house out in her province, you guys break up. That's where the Rafi Tulfo episodes are really funny and interesting. That's usually what happens. Foreign guy builds a house with his Filipina girlfriend out in the province. They split up. He wants his money back. You know why he wants his money back? Because he can't live there anymore. You think if I build a house in Fatima's village and we part ways that I'm going to be welcome in that village? I'm not saying they, that they would be mean to me or something like that, that's, but that's her village. If I built a house there and we part ways, I'm not living happily ever after, especially with a new girl in her village around her family. They're all related. You're leaving. And you're not getting a dime of that money back. That's what these Rafi Tulfo episodes are about. It's so fucking funny. The problem is most of these jackasses, I'll use that term loving, lovingly, is they will build a house on land that they don't know who the owner is. Let me say that again. Most of these jackasses build a house in their Filipina girlfriend or wife's village on land that they truly do not know who owns the land. Hell, their wife might not know actually who owns the land. Oh, well, I saw this piece of paper, blah, blah, blah. Oh, so, so your Filipino girlfriend showed you a piece of paper, the one that used to be working on the fucking pole at Atlantis, showed you a piece of paper, and now you're 100% confident that... Nanai owns that ground that you just put a $50,000 house on. 
or 30,000 or 20,000. You don't fucking know who owns the land. Oh, no, well, she says, okay, what did your lawyer say? Oh, I, I, I didn't get a lawyer, you know, I just looked at the papers and it's all. You didn't get a lawyer? Folks, every fucking day. My buddy, I love him to death, but did the same shit. And then, uh, he says, uh, I said, hey, did you see, I'll just use common term. Did you see the deed, right? No need to use local terminology. Just, hey, did you, did you see the deed? Yeah. What language was it written in? Well, it was written in Thai. I said, do you speak Thai? I know you don't speak Thai. You know you got a few words, but do you read Thai? Well, no. Then how the fuck do you know what that piece of paper said? She could have been showing you the fucking Chinese menu, uh, you know, at the mall. You don't fucking know. I can read Thai, but do you think if somebody slides a Thai, a Thai legal document in front of me, that even, even though I can read Thai, that I can comprehend what that document says? No! It's like I told him, motherfucker, you, you just did it again. You still don't know who owns that fucking land. Whose name is that land in? So, here's the problem. What happens is when you build on your girlfriend's land, they'll be quiet about it. The, the, the uncle who actually owns it will be quiet about it. But once that house gets built, he'll take that fucking deed and go out and borrow money on it. And a lot of times you won't know. And if the uncle stops making the payments, which most of the time he won't, it gets back to you. Hey, you owe this fucking loan. You either pay it or we're going to take the house. And you're like, what are you talking about? Well, Uncle so-and-so went and borrowed it because he technically owns the land. That's how you find out. You find out when, when the family borrows the money and they don't pay. They never pay. They can't pay. But they're not going to tell you, oh, you know, Uncle so-and-so lives in the next village. He actually owns that dirt. And because you didn't go get a lawyer, hey, oh, we're just building in my wife's village, foreigner Bill's house. Uh, see it all the time. I've been, over, I've been over here for over a decade. All right. It's a never-ending story. So this is, this is what I, I would do, okay? If I were, well, let me back up. Let's talk about another scam. This is a straight-up scam here. So you got the family who will borrow money on your place behind your back to where you're forced to pay off that loan, and then they'll do it again. Then you have the straight-up scams where, say you're going to lease a, 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 a piece of ground for 20 years or what have you. You're negotiating with somebody. You pay the lease. Once you pay that money, then the neighbor down the street will show up with the with a lease that he had for three years ago. But hey, no, 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 I have a lease already. Now you got to fucking pay this guy and get rid of this guy. All the neighbors, all the locals, they knew this shit all along, but locals aren't going to go against locals. And a lot of times what? They're all related. So this person about to get a big-ass payday, they're not going to say nothing. They're going to let you pay. And now this guy's going to get a payday. It's all good. Locals don't rat out locals. Okay? They, they don't snitch when it comes to doing business with the foreign guy. Alright? You're fair game. And if you don't understand that, you're going to get taken. So, how do you mitigate scams like that? Uh, and what I, I did an analogy too. It's like, you know, I'm from the backwoods of Mississippi, right? Everybody around that area we know it we, we all know each other and we're related what if, what if what if some guy from country x or even from new york comes down and uh tries to do business i'm not saying anybody would scam him but if there is anything shady nobody's going to that foreign guy to warn him we're all related you know we're all rednecks we're all broke nobody's saying shit because if you do you're a snitch and that's where you have to live. And motherfucking snitches get stitches. Nobody's going to tell you. Okay, so, how do you mitigate that? Okay, you might think I'm joking, but if I were to buy a plot of land and buy, not me, I would put it in my children's names. 
I have kids, so it's a different situation, right? I would put the land in both their names and set it up to where the Filipino mothers can't can't fucking. Uh, I would put it in their kids' names, and then I would lease it from them from uh, for me for thirty years. That's like what I would do. How would I do it? I would hire hire a local attorney to check everything out, and start setting everything up. Number two, I would go to Cebu City. I would hire a Cebu City lawyer to check the local lawyer and to make sure his shit is straight. Why? Because the dude in Cebu City, uh, as long as he's not from there, he doesn't have any relatives and he's not vested in the agreement, right? So I'm going to hire a local lawyer. I'm going to hire a lawyer in Cebu City to check this guy's shit. And then I'm going to go to Makati and hire a lawyer to check the guy in Cebu and the guy locally to give me the green light that everything's on the up and up, that it's not a scam and that nobody else owns the land. That's how I would do it. I would have three attorneys, three different locations. And I might even get one in Angeles City to check over them three. That's the Philippines. That's what I would do. Thailand is not that bad. Okay? Thailand is a lot more straightforward. The land office is more straightforward. Um, it's it's a totally different situation. You can go down to the land office, uh, check the deed, so to speak. If there's a lease, the lease is uh, usually attached to the deed. I, I no, you can't buy this property. It's got a 30-year lease on it. In the PI, don't trust nobody. That's my opinion. There's, there's, Thailand is not the Philippines. And the Philippines is certainly not Thailand. Okay, so we talked about you don't know who the land belongs to. But I saw the deed. You saw the deed. Did your lawyer see the deed? Well, I didn't pay a lawyer. Why? Because you think you're smart. You're too smart. Just like my buddy said in the email. That's the fucking problem. Too smart to pay a lawyer over here 200 bucks. Lawyers over here are dirt cheap compared to the West. It's not like they're going to rip you for five or ten grand just to look over uh, and set up real estate documents. It's a few hundred dollars. Okay? So if you're so fucking smart, oh, I'm going to save 200 bucks, do this shit myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're too smart to pay a fucking lawyer a couple hundred bucks. Ripoffs occur in the USA where you know the rules. Okay? But that's the problem. That's why you think you're smart. Because, well, I bought five properties in America, and I know that this and this and this, and then you come over here, and you ain't in Kansas no more. You don't know shit. I've been over here for over a decade, between here and the PI and all around. I still don't know it all. And I've been through everything, from marriages, divorce, funerals, uh, you know, fucking property situation. I've been, I've been through it all, and I still don't know it all custody disputes i've been in a philippine courtroom you know more than the goddamn cops i still don't know it all if i bought a three thousand dollar plot of land you know big as this room local lawyer one in cebu city one in makati and one in angeles city and i've been here over a decade okay it's like the thing you know people People get sick or they f they feel a lump, whatever. What do they do? They do they go to Dr. Google, try to figure it out themselves. You're messing with your health. You know, Dr. Google and a keyboard don't know what the hell is going on with you. But you know who does? Yeah, a fucking doctor. That's who, that's who knows what's going on. Buying property in a, in a, anywhere in the world. It applies in America. You don't know all the rules, but you know who does? A fucking real estate attorney. But go ahead. Build a fucking house in your girl's village when you don't know whose land you're building on. You know? Cool, you so-and-so appreciate that when you can go out and borrow some fucking money. Go to the cockfights. Got no idea, folks, how business is conducted outside your home country. Especially in Southeast Asia. Let me say it again. You have no idea. Unless you've lived in this region for a decade or more. Or been in business 
You have no idea how business is conducted over here. So don't try to be a fucking businessman. Pay a fucking lawyer. Help you. Uh, let's see. Alright, so I think that might be the end of my notes. Now what I want to do is go back over the email and just go point by point. Let me take a break because I need a new beer. So I'll be right back with you. Don't go anywhere. This will be about a two-second brief intermission. Okay, I'm back, folks. Turns out I really didn't need a, another beer. Still got about three-quarters of a beer in this cup here. Just had to piss. Anyhow, I'm back. I'm sure you wanted to know that development. Okay, let's go through the email through this case study. Because, again, I can talk all day long, but the, the actual stories and the case studies make people think more than just some jackass standing up in front of the room. Same way you're teaching a class, right? You can sit there and try to teach history, this and that, but you, if you just tell the story. So back to the story, right? Um, okay, so uh, I got to stop, stop saying that shit. What do they call them? Stalling words? Not stalling. Anyhow. You used to teach, right? It doesn't matter where. But like when you would do a practice run, all your peers would sit there in the audience and write down all your, uh, what do they call them? Not stutter, not stagger. When, when I say, uh, like, you know, you'd have all your peers write this shit down or they'd raise their hand and, what, what's wrong? You just said, uh, and they would basically break you from it, right? But I don't have anybody to break me from it because I'm just talking to the camera. But if you have your peers sit there and call you out on it while you're teaching a class, at some point you, you stop doing that stuff. Okay, so here we go. Um, the 86 grand. Okay, so we, we already talked about transferring the money now this is just food for thought right but what's safer if you're going to buy something and you need to transfer 86 grand is it safer to transfer it from your u.s bank account to your philippine bank account and then transfer it locally to whatever real estate agent or attorney or the condo uh, owners whatever you're transferring the money to is that safer versus having your U.S. bank transfer it directly to a condo? And I was sort of thinking about that because, you know, it can be done both ways, right? But I think that the people in America, they have no idea uh, who they're transferring it to, right? Just bear with me for a second. Versus, like, if you're, if you're buying from this condo and you got a... Uh, you know, your bank, your Philippine bank is like right next door. It almost seems it would be safer if you're going, if you walk into that bank and the condo is like a block over and say, yeah, I'm buying this condo right two blocks down. I need to transfer them the money. So it's sort of like now you've got locals with visibility on locals, you know, that might protect you more than if you've got somebody in America at your bank transferring it to a condo. Does that make sense? I, I'm really still like torn between that, but I'm just envisioning if I'm sitting in LA or I'm talking, you know, to my bank in LA, yeah, transfer it to this condo. They don't know anything about the condo people. They don't know if they're reputable or where their office is. Hell, they they don't even know where Philippines is on a map. But if I transfer that money from bank to bank. And that money is in your Philippine bank account, for example. Now, I'm, I'm walking into a physical branch and saying, yeah, I'm buying that condo right over there. What do we need to do to transfer the money? Then it's locals dealing with locals. And there, it's almost like there's an added level of security for me. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. I was just thinking about that. What do you think? What would you do? What did you do? Leave it down in the comments because you'll learn more in the comments than you'll learn from me talking. Again, I'm just here to invoke thought. But just think about that. What sounds like what this guy did in, in the email is he tried to wire the money straight to either the condo or the lawyer working for the condo 
and the initial folks or the initial transfer, somehow there was a middleman and there was some type of scam attempt involved. Where it's a lot safer, you know, say you go from uh, Bank of America to uh, BDO, there's not as much risk. There's, there's, how much risk can there be, right? It's, it's U.S. Bank to Philippine Bank. The money's going to get there. And then you walk into BDO two blocks over and say, yeah, I'm going to buy that condo over there. What do you know about them? It seems to me there's an added level of uh, security. But again, I'm not an accountant. I'm not a real estate attorney. Don't take my fucking advice. This man is not a lawyer. This man is not a real estate agent anywhere. All I'm doing is invoking thought based on uh, the woes of others. Okay, so anyhow, the first attempt was a scam. They, they luckily somehow or another blocked it. Then he buys the fucking condo, right? But then he figures out Cebu City sucks. Now, folks, there's a lot of good things in Cebu City. You know, like all your amenities are there. But, yeah, it's it's dirty, crowded. There's a lot of homeless people sleeping on the fucking streets in some places, more than Manila. You won't learn all these things until you move to a certain place. Because if you just came there for two weeks and went over to this resort and was, you know, hanging out with your girlfriend on the beach, oh, I want to move to Cebu. You haven't had time to explore the city and see what it's really like. What's that favorite word? What's a, a retiree, an expat, if you want to use that terminology? What's your favorite word? What's your friend? There he is. Bing! That word, that's your friend to keep you from losing your, your ass. Okay. Um, all right. I think I pretty much covered everything. I think I pretty much covered everything. Uh, this guy, you know, almost had a nervous breakdown, had to go to the hospital. We all know that feeling, right? When, when you're sitting there about to send a big sum of money on the internet or do a wire transfer, it's unnerving, right? I mean, it's absolutely unnerving. You know, if you ever screw around with cryptocurrency and you're doing a, a transfer or a buy or, you know, buying or selling and there's that... There's that wait time. And Bitcoin takes longer than others. Uh, like XRP is pretty much instant in my experience. Bitcoin will take a couple minutes and your heart's just fucking pounding. Because you're hoping like hell that shit didn't go into a black hole, right? So I can imagine if there was an issue or a hang up or a delay. Or they said, hey, you know, we, we don't know where the money went, what what have you. I want $86,000. It's a wonder the guy didn't have a fucking heart attack. Mental breakdown puts him in the hospital. Sure. That, you know, if you got $100,000 savings and you're about to transfer eighty six grand, and then there's a problem, that's half of us would fall out on the floor with a heart attack. How do you prevent that? Four fucking letters. Rent, motherfucker. Everybody hits me. Why don't you buy a house? Why don't you build a house? Blah, 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 blah. I've seen too many motherfuckers come over to this region and lose everything they got. Whether it was their Filipina bar girl, girlfriend, fiance. That let the dude build a house in their village and then they split up. And she told him to get the fuck out. Boom, 100 grand down the tubes. Their Thai bar girlfriend that they built a house on land that they only seen the deed in Thai. And then boom, they break up, move the fuck out. You lost 200 grand. Just never stops. Men don't want to take advice. Because we know it all. So that song? Ask for money, get advice. Ask for advice, get money twice. Yep. 
maybe I touched on it, but one big thing. What if you move to the Philippines and you decide you don't like the Philippines? It's not for everybody. Okay? There are other countries in, here in Southeast Asia. I saw a comment the other day. Dude said he lived in the Philippines, wasn't happy. He moved to, uh, moved to Cambodia. He's got lower rent, lower electric, fucking living the dream. He said, fuck the Philippines. Some people move to Thailand. They don't like Thailand. They move to the Philippines. Some people are going to Vietnam. You have those options options because every country is different the ladies are different the culture is different you're sitting there doing you know folks i get these emails all the time let's say what what qualifies you to give a retirement speech you're not retired no there ain't nothing about me retired i'm just getting started i just hit 51 years old i feel great i'm just getting started in life but what qualifies me to talk about retirement I've been over here for over a decade, and I've seen y'all come and go. People show up with 200 grand in their bank and, you know, leave out on a red eye because they owe the dude next door. They lost their ass, lost their house to their local girlfriend. Got a lot of experience with it, but no, I ain't retired. But I can tell you this. If you rent and decide you don't like the Philippines, it's one flight. 150 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever it is to get to Thailand or to get to Cambodia or get to Vietnam or get to Laos. And maybe you fall in love with those countries and live happily ever after. If you rent, you have those options. Two suitcases, never own more shit than you can put in two suitcases. Okay? I didn't make that up. That's a friend of mine, his buddy. I have no idea who the buddy was, but that was his philosophy. Never own more shit than you can put in two suitcases. It makes perfect sense, especially if you're retiring. So there you go. I hope I have invoked thought in you, the viewer, doing research about your retirement. I know there's plenty here on my channel. I get these messages. Hey, man, I'm, you know, I'm planning on retiring in three years, four years, five years. I got a five-year plan. I got a two-year plan. I'm going to the Philippines. You ain't never lived there. How do you know you're going to like it? Thailand might be more suited for you. Keep your options open. Okay, let's summarize. In closing, in closing, number one, keep your options open by keeping your fucking savings and your nest egg in your U.S. bank account until... You are comfortable enough, knowledgeable enough, and have enough experience to make a decision otherwise. Because again, I'm not telling you how you spend your money. I'm just telling you the timing. So you keep your money in, in your home country's bank account for at least the first year. You rent for at least the first year. And then you go from there. Uh, see, number two, you don't know shit about how business is handled in Southeast Asia, even if you're a fucking businessman right now. And if you just retired from the military, this is going to cut you deep, but you don't know shit about business. And even in America, you don't know shit about business, and I see that a lot too. Oh, you know, I'm gunnery sergeant so-and-so, so-and-so, and I'm going to come over here and start a fucking business and build this, and you ain't never done a business in the private sector in your life and now you're going to come try to be a business expert in southeast asia where you don't even know the fucking laws keep your money in your fucking pocket enjoy your retirement sit out on a beach go out to eat every night live within your budget and don't fucking buy anything and for god's sake don't invest in anything there's plenty of fucking scammers over here to take your money let's see what else Condos, consider the risks. Buying land, which you technically can't own, consider the risks. Don't build shit in your wife's village on land that you don't even know who owns it. What is that, five points? Who the hell knows? Man, I've been drinking beer. Uh, so, compress down one last time. Rent. 
keep your fucking money in your home country's bank account for at least a year. There you go. That's my advice to you. I'm not telling you how to spend your money. But if I save one motherfucker out of this video, and that's what I try to do. When I do these videos about, you know, what to do if you catch chlamydia after sleeping with three bar girls, it's because if we older guys don't air out our dirty laundry and tell these stories for others, and especially the younger generation that are so naive to the ways of the world. If we don't share these stories and try to educate the younger folks, they just repeat the shit. Especially this younger generation. They're such pussies. They don't have any fucking street smarts. They will get taken. Just fucking taken to the cleaners. Unless guys like us put the dirty laundry out there. Tell the stories. Don't just sit up there you know, and preach from a textbook. Tell the fucking stories. So anyhow, shout out to my buddy, man. Thanks for thanks for telling the story. I hope your buddy's okay. Uh, sounds like he's the proud owner of an $86,000 condo that he's just having a little buyer's remorse. You know, either put it on Airbnb or turn it over to maybe the property manager, rent it out, move to Angeles City, see if your life improves. But uh, I don't have a lot of hope for you trying to sell that anytime soon. There's just too many on the fucking market. Uh, folks, leave your story, comments, and uh, thoughts down in down and down below. Because again, people learn more from you than they learn from me. All I do is set the stage and open up the topic for discussion. And I'm just trying to invoke thought. Thank you very much for joining me on today's talk. I'm about to get on the motorbike, take me a ride wherever the wind is going to blow me. We'll see y'all on the next one. Peace out. And don't forget that life is short. Live it, live it every day, my friends, because that's what I do. I'll see y'all on the next one. I'm out of here. Ah, oh, that's some good beer scene. Sing high beer. <sighs> See, I got y'all. I don't drink and drive. I ain't getting on the motorbike today. I'm just fucking with you. I just giving you a little bit of time. See if somebody commented and said, You know, you this old drunk bastard sitting there drinking and driving on that dang old motorbike. You just admitted, motherfucker, you're going to go out and drink and drive on that motorbike. I was just hunting for donkeys. <laughs> and I probably caught a few. I'm hoping I caught a few. Don't drink and drive, folks. And maybe, you know what? I've been working on tomorrow's video of uh, another motorbike safety video. I'll give you a preview. I haven't I haven't even started it. But uh, about four four days ago, anyhow, a few days ago, drove right past a motor, motorcycle crash. Wasn't nothing but fucking teeth, hair, and eyeballs all over the pavement. I said, you know what? I'm going to do another motorcycle safety video. So that's coming up. Maybe that's what I filmed today. Let's talk about that. I'm out of here.